Good afternoon, everyone. I think we will start now. It is 2.30 in India and 3 o'clock in Bangladesh. So I think it's time for us to begin. I'll just briefly introduce myself. Uh, I'm Yash Kansal, and I'm the Deputy Managing Director for APCO Worldwide, based in India. And I would like to welcome you to the webinar today on edible oil and fat consumption trends in Bangladesh. Uh, my firm, APCO Worldwide, is a global impact consulting firm. We are present in more than 80 countries worldwide, among which is definitely the South Asian market. And impact consulting, and a better word, are some things that we definitely associate with. And in that context, I think palm oil and sustainable palm oil is something that is extremely important as we understand the role of palm oil in the edible oil consumption trends in India. So in today's discussion, I think we are focusing on the Bangladesh market. And this particular webinar, I think if some of you saw the previous uh, videos, is part of a series that we are doing uh, where we are trying to understand the palm oil markets in various large consuming markets. So earlier this month, we did a webinar focused on India. And on this one, we are focusing on Bangladesh. And we will continue this series to focus on China, Pakistan, and other markets in the coming months. So for today's discussion, we will definitely look at, you know, what are the basic edible oil consumption trends in Bangladesh with, of course, you know, a focus on palm oil and what is the role that palm oil is playing in Bangladesh. We will also look at various qualitative aspects of sustainable palm oil consumption as compared to other edible oils and how is the trend of palm oil growing in Bangladesh. I might also remind you that we have a Q&A blurb right at the bottom of your screen. So if you have any questions, please do put it there. We will take them all towards the end of the session, which will really help make this session more interactive. Uh, the chat box is just you know, mentioned there, just in case you want to remark anything which is not really a question. So feel free to use either the chat or the Q&A box as appropriate for the thing that you have to share, but do make it interactive. For the session today, we, I think, have a very, very esteemed group of panelists, which will help us understand the topic. I think straight off, we will have uh, Tanshri Dattu, Dr. Yusuf Basara, and he will be followed with uh, Mr. Fakru Ala, Dr. Pushko, and Mr. Fazal Mahmood. So I think, uh, to begin with, I would like to, of course, uh, invite Tanshri Dattu, Dr. Yusuf Basuram, who is the executive director for the Council for Palm Oil Producing mm -hmm. Countries. And I think his views will be extremely important for us to understand, you know, how does a large palm oil countries, which are producing palm oil in large quantities, view palm oil and how do they perceive it growing in Bangladesh? So I think with that, uh, I think uh, we would like to hand over the mic today to Mr. Tanshri Datu. Tanshri, all yours. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes. OK. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Mr. Yash Kansar. Uh, I recognize uh, Mr. Fakrul Alam has been a colleague at work for many, many years. And now he's about to be <laughs> a man of leisure, I suppose. Uh, soon. So distinguished speakers and participants, uh, good afternoon. I would like to thank everyone for joining another session of the CFOXC webinar series. It's always a great pleasure to speak for and on behalf of the Council during this event. And it is an honor to welcome everybody this afternoon, uh, in spite of your daily commitment. Uh, we are here to listen to key palm oil experts in Bangladesh. This webinar series was started upon realization that the current COVID-19 pandemic is far from being declared as over. Uncertainties of what lies ahead are still looming over us. However, with these challenges, there must come resilience. This pandemic has brought us to a new way of strengthening efforts to meet and collaborate that definitely does not dilute the paramount goal we wish to achieve. 
palm oil is not exempt uh, from the impact of these uncertain times. Pandemic poses concern on continued fluctuation or fluctuating market trends and prices. I believe our speakers, Mr. Fakro Alam and other discussants will further elaborate how the uncertainties during the COVID-19 have proven that there are opportunities and efforts that should not escape our attention and action uh, uh, as well as uh, action as palm oil producing countries uh, and consuming countries. In that regard, our producer side, I'm ensuring that the current and future development of palm oil industry will be based on sustainable practices that take into account environmental, social and economic consideration to create a balance or to create a balance among economic growth, better livelihood for small holder farmers and environmental protection. On this occasion that we are going to discuss edible oil and fats consumption trend in Bangladesh, it is widely used in every household, food processing industries, hotels and restaurants. Most of the Bangladeshi dishes that we are familiar with, such as kachi biryani, kichuri, and pakoras, use palm oil because the oil quality influences the flavor and stability of the foods. And not to mention, it has plenty of health benefits. Palm oil is also the most affordable oil compared to other plant oil, plant-based oils, and by far the most sustainable, environmentally friendly oil crop, as it requires less uh, land and less inorganic inputs to attain high yield. Bangladesh plays an important role in the global economic scene for palm oil, as it is one of the largest importers of palm oil in the world today. The long-term economic growth in Bangladesh has seen a momentous growth in the consumption of edible oils and fats. In the past two decades, consumption of oils and fats in Bangladesh shows a steady increasing trend, which is one of the highest among the developing countries. Saying this trend, palm oil producers are and will be responsible to meet the increasing palm oil demand in the of the consumers in Bangladesh sustainably. The supply and demand points to a lead, uh, to a main pattern that, uh, that I would like to share with all of you here. The palm oil industry is consistent in facing the challenge to meet goal number 12 of the SDG or Sustainable Development Goals. That would be responsible consumption and production and is our prompt, therefore it is also our prompt response, meaning responsible consumption and production is our prompt response to the rapid growth of edible oil demand. But at the same time, it has to supply products that meet the global standard of sustainability. The commitments of palm oil producing countries to supply sustainable palm oil have been proven with the enactment of the following sustainability schemes, the Indonesian Sustainable Palm Oil ISPO and the Malaysian Sustainable Palm Oil MSPO. Joint efforts by palm oil producing countries like Indonesia and Malaysia and major consuming countries like Bangladesh to collaborate and foster partnership in making palm oil sustainable is becoming the acceptable norm moving forward. This event is to con is a continuation of the previous efforts towards a single direction, sharing commitments to carry out our roles to ensure sustainable production and consumption amid this COVID-19 crisis. It is my hope and desire that you will take advantage of this opportunity to come up with valuable recommendation and conclusions that will be beneficial to the interests of palm oil consuming and producing countries. Before concluding, I must pay tribute to our main speaker today, uh, Mr. Fakro Alam, who has been, uh, I believe, uh, working to introduce palm oil uh, into Bangladesh for many, many years, two or almost three decades. 
of work put in by him. And to some extent, the development of the market and the current trend that you see in Bangladesh now is partly is uh, also attributed to his dedicated work in uh, promoting palm oil in Bangladesh. So uh, he is suggesting uh, early retirement after this. So uh, we wish him luck, but bear in mind that he has all the experience uh, to share with you as far as uh, palm oil consumption trend in Bangladesh. With that, I wish you a more successful webinar. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Tanshi, for giving your opening remarks and also providing us a perspective for the next speakers. I think it's a very important thing that you mentioned that you know the sustainability aspect of palm oil is one of the most significant things and how it contributes to SDG 12. I think that is something that we should all remember as we look to promote palm oil in the producing market. So now I think uh, Tanshri has already given a little overview of our main speaker today, uh, Mr. Fakrul Alam, but I think I'll just briefly mention, and that's also there on your screen, that uh, Mr. Fakrul Alam has been really promoting uh, the palm oil uh, for more than 30 years. You know, it, it's a career that has spanned three decades, and he has been with the Malaysian Palm Oil Council since 1995 and has been responsible for the Bangladesh and Nepal markets. And he has also worked as regional manager for Myanmar and Sri Lanka. So he is somebody who is a real expert for palm oil in the entire South Asian region. So it will be really good to have his perspective, not just for Bangladesh, but as and when needed, I think we could also use his insights for the markets. Prior to joining MPOC, Mr. Alam also worked for Bangladesh Sugar and Food Industries Corporation for more than 12 years. And he is currently also a member of the Dhaka Chamber of Commerce and of BMCCI. With that, uh, I would like to invite Mr. Prakul Alam to give his keynote address for this session and help us understand the consumption trends for edible oil and fats in Bangladesh and the contribution of palm oil in shipping. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yas. Thank you, Tansri. My ex-boss, while I was in Malaysian Palm Oil Council for a long, quite long time. Uh, and it's my pleasure to see him again in this webinar. Thank you, Tansri, again. And also thank you to Mr. Yas for a, for a nice and comprehensive introduction about me. I am not that big. I'm a small fellow, okay? In my presentations, <clears throat> I will try to give you a picture about the import as well as congestion trend of Bangladesh. Bangladesh is now a uh, lower middle income group and uh, yeah, having its GDP as uh, 2,122, which is highest in the subcontinent. And, uh, and this uh, continuous GDP growth is plus 6% despite this the COVID. You can see here the brief on the oil and fat scenario of the country. Bangladesh annually consumes about three, 3 million plus million, uh, tons of oil and fat, uh, fat. And, and the country <coughs> and the palm oil is the leading edible oil in this country since 2003. Bangladesh is a price sensitive market and, uh, and the major segment of the population are from lower income group. Accordingly, palm oil, the, uh, this competitive price of palm oil compared to other two oils, namely soybean and the mustard oil. Um, uh, palm oil, uh, Bangladesh brought a significant change in the per capita consumption of oils and fat, which was only 7.5 kg. That is the 20.5 gram per day in the 2003 now it is 18.4 kg, that is about 51 gram per day. And, and, and it has been possible because of competitive price of palm oil. In this slide, <clears throat> you may have the uh, input figure, year oil input figure of different oil oils. And indigenous production is not sufficient, which is only 250 to 
280,000 tons. So mostly the Bangladesh is dependent on import. And the import is increasing in pace with consumption. The increase of GDP income as well as per capita purchasing power, uh, the consumption of oils and fat also increasing. And to cope up with the increased consumption of oils and fat, import is also increasing. You can see in the in the in the twenty uh, until the twenty eighteen there was a smooth growth of import, but in twenty nineteen there was a slight decline. It is it is because of cat for our stock of twenty eighteen, but in twenty twenty it is the pandemic. It is because of COVID pandemic and that has. Uh, and the total input declined by uh, by about 1.6 percent compared to 20 previous year. In this slide, I tried to plot the congestion trend. You could see here from the 2015 to 2019 there is a smooth growth, except the 20, <coughs> except the 20, 20, 2020, the uh, congestion declined because of pandemic, and and the decline was just what sufferer is the palm oil because all the four major sector of palm oil, namely uh, uh, homestead consumption, shortening industries, food processing industries, as well as uh, hotel and horeca sector, all were closed for long, more, more than one and half year. And that has uh, impacted the consumption of palm oil badly and, and finally total oil and fat. Here I have plotted the uh, different, uh, congestion trend of different oils and fat since 2016. You can see here the palm oil is the leading oil in the congestion pattern and the per capita congestion. You can see the per capita congestion is increasing gradually last five years, per capita consumption, which uh, I, I just plotted here for the five years only, which is 15.3 to 18.8 kg, 18.9 kg, and the 18.9 was the highest in the 2019, and then the uh, slightly decline. And, and now in this slide, you can see where the palm oil goes. Major consumption sector is the household consumption, as the cooking oil, and the second largest consumer is the shortening and bonus put industry, and the th followed by food processing industries and the horeca. Now, in this slide, <coughs> I have I have highlighted the issues and challenges for the must market expansion as well as sustain of palm oil share in the market. Beside the image issue because palm oil is suffered from image compared to other two oil, that is soybean and mustard oil. And the new issue has been added, that is the increasing import of oil seeds. And among the two oil seeds, one is soybean and one is mustard and rapeseed oil. Rapeseed oil is not that much uh, challenge because of its high price, but, uh, but, the, but the soybean, the import of soybean is a really challenge. Soybean, uh, import of soybean is, is exempted from the 15% value added tax. And, and as a result, the oil obtained from imported soybean comparably cheaper, and, and that is a challenge for palm oil. When the price difference between the, uh, between the refined soybean and the refined palm oil uh, is, is narrow, people goes to buy, uh, people uh, people prefers to buy the soybean oil because of its image. So it is a growing challenge for palm oil and the import of soybean is growing day by day. <clears throat> in, the, uh, in, the, uh, in the year 2020, the total import of soybean was 2.3 million ton, which was 38% thir uh, higher compared to 2019. And you can guess the growth of import of soybean. There are two reasons import of soybean. One is the poultry 
as a cattle sector as, a fish, as well as fish, fishery there is a great demand of meal and then the soybean oil soybean oil can be obtained about 18% on an average oil extraction rate and that gives uh, the oil obtained from the soybean are are also exempted from the bellowed tax so the so there is a price difference of 15% between the import of palm oil in bulk and and the oil and soybean oil obtained locally from the soybean crushing factory so the so there's a big challenge for palm oil marketing people are getting soybean oil near, almost near to the price level of you know, price level of palm oil and uh, when the price level is as i mentioned earlier when the price level between the refined soybean and the refined palm oil is narrow people goes to buy for soybean oil because of its perception so how how we can challenge this issues and how to sustain the palm oil market share in this market we need to need to give effort i need to give effort to increase the interaction between the palm oil supplier and the and the local palm oil importer address the negative perception about palm oil through the integration of promotional print media campaign and social media activity nowadays social media activity is very effective so the so the intensity of social media presence to be increased and and then and the other problem there is a limited number of palm oil brand in the market and in the self in the self palm oil brands are not visible in the hindi there is a phrase proverb jo dekhta hai wo bikta hai palm oil brand are not seen in the shelf of the retailer so all the shelves are full with the palm oil soybean oil brand so the people naturally inclined towards the soybean oil and the th and then the fourth is to increase the strength of palm oil lobby we need to have a good lobbying towards palm oil as for example present this uh, tariff discrepancy we need to remove the tariff discrepancy uh, of the of the import of soybean oil this 15% bad the at least the oil which is obtained from the imported soybean that has to be brought under the 15% bellowed tax then there will be fair competition between the refined palm and the refined soybean otherwise the the import of soybean will continue to grow uh, further and further now now i will look at some of the facts on palm oil next two slide will discuss about the facts on palm oil per gram of palm oil like other vegetable provide 9 kilo kilo uh, kilo calorie of energy and in in the bangladesh presently we just uh, presently on an average uh, per head calorie intake is is, is 2200 kilo calorie and uh, of that about 450 kilo, uh, kilo calorie comes from the oil with the consumption of about 51 gram per day of edible oil so and the palm oil is a major share of the daily intake of oils and fat so the palm oil plays a good role in providing the daily calories to its population palm oil also a rich source of vitamin pro vitamin a as well as pro vitamin uh, as well as vitamin e palm oil is a balanced uh, uh, edible oil containing equal amount of saturated and unsaturated fatty acid and it is very conducive in in the preparing of local food that's why the people like the palm oil in their daily consumption and and then the other benefits are i have discussed here trans fat free and it is a highly discussing issue nowadays even in bangladesh and and the shorty as i mentioned earlier in bangladesh uh, shortening industry consumes uh, about 400000 tons of palm oil every year Uh, and the and the shortening and fats produced from the palm oil are the trans fat free 
as well as palm oil is non-GMO. So it is a safe oil for the people. Palm oil is rich in vitamin, as I mentioned earlier, rich in vitamin A and E. Paracore yield the palm oil is highest among, among all the vegetable oils. A study by the International Union of Conservation of Nature uh, found that palm oil contribute almost 40% of the kind of global oils and fat occupying in only about 5.5% of total global oil group area, which is the least as compared to other edible oil. Palm oil is the only vegetable oil that has a sustainable certification program by state bodies like the Indonesian Sustainable Palm Oil ISPU and the Malaysian Sustainable Palm Oil MSPU, which are exemplary measures towards fighting climate change. About 80% of the palm oil produced globally is used for food. Presently, uh, global production of palm oil is about 70 million ton and the total production of oils and fat is 260 million tons. What is the potential? Bangladesh is the eighth largest populous country in the world and third in Asia. So the consumption of oils and fat will continue to grow because of the population. Besides, it is a fast growing economy on an average of plus 5% annual GDP. Uh, which is contributing in the increased per capita income as well as per capita purchasing power, resulting in continuous growth in consumption of oils and fat with an annual growth rate of 7 to 12 percent. Insufficient and in stagnant indigenous production of oils and fat, we have limited land. We cannot spare any further land for the production of oil seed. Accordingly, we need to be dependent on import. And with the increase of consumption, import will continue to grow. So the Bangladesh, uh, in, the, in the next slide, I'll show how the import will, will grow in the future years. Palm oil is a major edible oil in this country 2003, and it is very acceptable uh, oil, uh, oil, especially to the, to the lower segment of population who constitute about 70% of the, of, the, of the population of 165 million people. And the oil is very conducive in preparing the local dishes. And everyday curry, they, um, uh, palm oil is very suitable for, uh, for preparing the everyday curries like the fish curry, meat curry, etc, etc. Increasing uses of palm oil in the food sector, which is increasing rapidly with the growth of food processing industries. With the economic growth, food, uh, food, uh, food habits are being change, uh, changing. So the people are dependent on, on more and more on the processed food. So the food processing industries are growing, uh, who are one of the major consumer of palm oil. So here I have plotted the, the, the projection until the uh, 2050, uh, uh, sorry, 2025. Here is a, uh, you can see here, the import of Sudisbu is not the least challenge for palm oil. The challenge is soybean oil obtained from the import of so soybean, which is growing. And it is expected that it will reach over 3 million in the 2025. And it may be more because of uh, substantial growth of consumption of of the soybean meal in the poultry, fisheries, and the cattle feed sector, which is, which is also growing um, because of demand as uh, demand. So we need to focus on this issue to just eliminate the, the tariff, tariff discrepancy on the import of palm oil and the soybean oil obtained locally from imported soybean oil. If we can neutralize this issue, definitely palm oil, import, palm oil growth will be further high and it will, be, it will be reached by 2 million ton in the 2030. So this is the tariff, present tariff structure. You can see here, there is no duty on the import of soybean seed. 
not at all. But the but soybean oil, which is imported in the city's view, and and the palm oil, which is imported in RBD or in the uh, or in the semi-refined or in the crude oil, that bears fifteen percent value added tax. So that's why the uh, palm oil is unable to compete with the soybean oil obtained locally from the imported soybean. So this is my uh, this is the last slide of my presentation. Then thank you. Thank, thanks a lot, Mr. Fortul. I think that was very, very enlightening. And it was good to have you present us a, you know, a full readout of the industry, which can provide a solid ground for the further participants and speakers to discuss the subject. I think I had a lot of takeaways, you know, especially considering that uh, palm oil in Bangladesh is nearly 50% of consumption. And in terms of imports, it's close to 60%. So I think that that's real big role for palm oil in Bangladesh. So I think with that, uh, we will continue to our next discussion. And uh, we are really privileged to have Dr. Pushko Adigirwanu with us, who is the head of CIPA Center at the IPB University. And Dr. Girwanu is also one of the members of Functional Food Working Group, Indonesia Ministry of Health. And he also holds a membership of Indonesia Risk Assessment Center so I think he also has a perspective from maybe a producing country perspective from Indonesia that could be really helpful as he looks to you know, leverage it for the Bangladesh market. Uh, Dr. Pushpo is a PhD in molecular nutrition and has been conducting various research projects in the topics of bioactive functional compounds effect on inflammation related cellular signaling. He has also got scientific papers in the same domain published in some of the esteemed publications. So I think from a scientific perspective, we could definitely look to get some further insights from Dr. Pushko. So with that, Dr. Pushko, welcome to this webinar. Thank you for joining us and we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Mr. Yash Kansal. Um, it's a pleasure um, and it's a privilege, honor um, to be invited to join you, to all the uh, distinguished guests and panelists here. Um, Will it be okay if I if I share uh, a few slides to, to give the audience, to give everyone um, some very powerful message about sure. palm oil? Sure. Thank you. So I hope you can see the slides in front of you. So this is um, reiterating what um, Mr. Fahrul Alam has said, that um, if you ever look at the population, um, we are always increasing and you can see 2050, we are expected to hit around about 9 billion to 10 billion people. And if you have a look at the demand of um, vegetable oil here, it could reach anywhere from 225 all the way to 250 million tons. Now, as uh, Mr. Farul Alam mentioned, that the productivity when it comes to producing these vegetable oils, um, we can see that palm oil is probably the most um, productive. It requires only 0.26 um, hectare here to produce that one ton compared to soybean. So if we put this into perspective, then if we say, for example, we use soybean um, um, as, as the US is probably the largest producer of soybean, it will take half of the area, the land area of the US to provide that 225 million tons. And if you have a look um, at rapeseed, um, slightly better in yield compared to soybean, uh, but again, it's, it's nowhere close to palm oil you can see that you will have to use the whole of Europe to produce enough of that um, vegetable oil to, to feed the world, basically. And if you have a look at um, palm oil, you can see that it's probably just this region um, of the world that can provide that 225 million tons per year for that 2050. So um, I think this will answer, or this, you know, by communicating these powerful messages, um, that palm oil is probably one of the best answers when it comes to providing, to feeding the future people of the planet, um, the sustainability, the, the high yield and so on. So this is a, um, a good message uh, to tell everyone. 
but I'm not going to stop here because I'd like to talk about the unique or, or the, the, the nutritional content of palm oil. It has um, that uh, equal balance of um, saturated and unsaturated fatty acid. Uh, so this is palm palmitate compared to oleate. And why is this very important? Because this is, and this is a secret basically to all the manufacturers um, these uh, that, that, that produce uh, infant formulas is that, have a look at this particular um, fatty acid profile of human milk. Um, and then have a look at what it takes those manufacturers to produce the same profile of that human milk. And you can see that these yellow bars, you will have to have palm oil added to that formula. So then it can resemble uh, human milk that will give you or will give uh, babies and infants uh, the best um, nutritional source during their early life. And again, um, we have to have, or uh, I, I believe this is a, a good platform to, to spread the word that these are some of the benefits or, or very important benefits when it comes to uh, palm oil providing nutritional uh, qualities. But it does not stop there. Um, the slides that um, Mr. Um, Alam showed us, it contains a lot of vitamin A. Um, this is very important in, in uh, addressing all vitamin A deficiencies in this world. You can see the map where you have vit vitamin A deficiencies. But what's interesting is that if you have a look here, pointed by the arrow, Nigeria, um, does not have this particular problem because they have been consuming red uh, palm oil for in, in their daily cuisines, basically. And so that, that's, that's one success story of how palm oil can address these kinds of issues. And I think there are many papers here that have been shown to effectively combat vitamin A deficiencies in many countries. And um, so just to finally close off, um, again, we also have other, other nutrients, vitamin E, for example, in palm oil. This is a very strong um, uh, antioxidant. And this has been used um, experimentally at the moment, clinical experiments, to show that they can deal with um, oxidative stress in brain of, of human clinical trials, uh, where you can see the lowering of those lesions, um, inhibiting uh, lesion growth, inhibiting um, cellular damage and, and aging and so on. So um, I think there's a lot that we can explore when it comes to palm oil, all the goodness, all the, um, all the uh, nutrients and benefits. And uh, I think that would be a, a good, a good uh, avenue to explore um, all over the world, not just, um, you can also do it in, in Bangladesh, for example, as we are talking about Bangladesh. So um, increase the consumption. Um, there's no need to worry about all these issues. Um, I think scientists, I think food manufacturers, they can explore um, uh, what are the benefits that you can get from all these palm oil. So that's um, what I'd like to share with you today. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Thank, thanks a lot, Dr. Pushpo. That was quick and very impactful. I think what we learned from Mr. Fakrul, I think you provided some evidence-based understanding, especially with the context of vitamin A and vitamin E. And I do hope we can use some of those details uh, for addressing the image or other issues with palm oil as that grows in Bangladesh. So I think we will now move on to our final discussant uh, for the webinar. And I would like to welcome uh, Mr. Faisal Mahmood, who is the Senior Marketing Manager at Bangladesh Edible Oil Limited. Uh, Mr. Mahmood is a veteran marketing professional and he has experience in rapid multinationals like Grameen Phone, Virgil Paints, and other organizations. And he has been with the edible oil sector for more than 10 years. I think so that can really help us provide strong perspective uh, from his business background and edible oil background uh, on this particular webinar. He also has an MBA and BBA from the University of Dhaka and has made significant contribution in the edible oil sector. So thank you, Mr. Faisal, for joining us today. And we really look forward to hearing your thoughts next. Welcome. Thank you. Um, my earlier discussion discussed everything about uh, current supply issues, 
and consumption trend in everything. In, in fact, in Bangladesh, we are observing a surge in consumption of edible oils. Like uh, a study in Bangladesh showed like uh, per capita consumption of oil is raised almost five kg a year in last seven or eight years. So, so the uh, demand for edible oil will go further <clears throat> per capita demand. And I believe the key driver for, uh, for uh, serving that demand through uh, good palm oil is communication. Still, we feel the necessity of uh, further communication effort uh, from uh, palm oil marketers in Bangladesh, especially consumer pack marketers. We have seen uh, consumer pack business is rising further. <clears throat> Every year it's uh, more than double digit growth. So uh, consumer pack business can also drive the uh, drive in communicating the goodness of palm oil also. So still in Bangladesh, uh, the proportion of consumer pack palm oil is extremely low, but it's rising at a faster pace. So I believe uh, with uh, proper communication, we can uh, solve this issue and uh, explain the goodness of palm oil to consumers. We have taken some initiatives with uh, Fakrul Bhai and some other parties to promote palm oil and consumer pack palm oil in the country. There also we have seen, uh, whenever we uh, communicated with, uh, with a in a particular segment or in a particular region, the demand uh, went up. People got to know, got to understand the goodness of the oil and people accepted it. So if we can sustain the communication effort across uh, different regions of Bangladesh, or across a different consumer group in Bangladesh, we believe uh, we can uh, get a sustainable impact uh, in the acceptance of palm oil in, in Bangladesh. We are uh, working on it and some other companies are also working and I believe a good future about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Faisal. I think uh, those were interesting insights and I definitely agree that, you know, Communication is key, especially with some of the common threads that we are seeing in multiple producing markets and consumer markets. That image is an issue. Whereas, you know, we see that uh, palm oil is the most sustainable of the other oils that we have in these markets. And also the fact that, you know, it is nutritionally rich, but still that image issue seems to, you know, kind of, you know, continue to have a problem for this industry. So I think uh, that is definitely a very, very valid point that you have raised. With that, I think we definitely have, you know, I would again uh, request uh, our folks to keep asking us questions and we will take them. I think some of the questions that we had so far related more to the image issue and how we can settle that. And I think Mr. Faisal did say that frequent communication will help. But maybe I think before we take more questions, uh, I would invite, you know, we have uh, Park Dupito uh, with us from CPOPC. And, uh, you know, Park uh, Dupito, we've already had uh, a few webinars in this series. Uh, I would really like to have your perspectives on Bangladesh and what you heard from other speakers, but also, you know, what are the common threads that you see in the main consuming markets and also Bangladesh and how can we jointly address, you know, so any thoughts among sharing experiences would also help from, from, from this webinar's perspective. So Park Diputo, look forward to getting your thoughts. Uh, thank you so much, uh, yes, for the opportunity. And of course, uh, I need to also thank our speakers today, Mr. Alam, Mr. Puspo and Mr. Mahmoud, in our collective uh, efforts to have a better understanding of palm oil and increase its uh, market share in a key market like, like Bangladesh. Palm oil, in my opinion, uh, is right to claim greater uh, market share in Bangladesh and also in other markets for affordability, greater awareness uh, for health-related issues, versatility, but also increasingly for sustainability. Image issue due to smear campaigns has been cited as crucial to be addressed. And it is time perhaps to be more offensive rather than defensive on image issue. 
better uh, communication has been suggested by Mr. Mahmoud. I think it is something that uh, we need to, to redouble in the future. Sustainability is the commitment of producing countries like Indonesia and Malaysia, and not because what others like the European Union suggest. So for them, sustainability is also about actions to discriminate against the most sustainable vegetable oil that is from oil. Homegrown schemes like uh, ISPO and MSPO are true commitments from producing countries that the palm oil industry will abide to and continue to improve sustainability standard. We all know that as part of a, a global trend, the palm oil sector is now transforming uh, to enhance sustainability in production as well as consumption. And that is why, again, I think I agree that the market issue should be addressed uh, by uh, all of us uh, that are concerned in improving uh, better understanding and also market share of palm oil in Bangladesh. In that connection, if I may suggest, uh, Mr. Riaz and also uh, all uh, participants, producing countries and consuming countries like Bangladesh need to ensure that all oils imported to this country is sustainable, at the same time addressing you know, the unfair policy and treatment as has been highlighted by Mr. Alam in his uh, presentation. If uh, such collaboration can be achieved, there is no doubt uh, sustainable palm oil will be the choice of Bangladesh. Uh, I think uh, I'll end my, you know, my my uh, intervention there. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, and thank you all for your attention. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Park Gupito, for your valuable remarks. Uh, you know, I I do see that you know we have in our chat box uh, a few requests for the presentation. I think we have Rahat from the Daily Sun and also Yajit. Uh, requesting presentation. So I think we will definitely be uploading the entire session on YouTube. But I think for people who have also requested the presentations, I think uh, we will send that across. So, so, so we will have that uh, sent across to you. Uh, I will now come to some of the questions uh, that uh, uh, have come to us through the Q&A box. And maybe Mr. Fakrul, we will first uh, take them to you. And if you could, you know, maybe, you know, there are two or three questions for you, you know, one of course is, why do you think is the NPOC office getting closed when, you know, ostensibly it was doing good work. The second thing is, you know, in your experience, what could really be done to improve the image of palm oil? I think we did hear some suggestions, but I think it would be valuable to hear from you further on uh, what could be done there. I think we also have, uh, I think on our uh, Q&A box, uh, Sheikh Mehdi Hassan providing uh, some insights of his own on what could be done. But I think uh, we would look forward to hearing your thoughts, you know, both on strategies of MPOC going forward and also what could be done about the image. So should I start, Mr. Yes? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. In fact, Malaysian Palm Oil Council office is being closed on the issue of um, financial uh, issue because Malaysia is curtailing its, its expenses. Uh, so under the scheme, the Mal uh, they are closing down the Bangladesh office. And here I would like to add one important point in support of the presentation given by Mr. Pushpa is that in, in the Bangladesh, uh, vitamin A deficiency was an acute problem uh, prior to the massive uh, use of palm oil in this country. As soon as in the in the uh, since the year 2003, palm oil is being used widely, and with the growth of increase of use of palm oil, this vitamin A deficiency is uh, eliminated. Now there is almost the vitamin A deficiency or very, very negligible. And it is the contribution of palm oil because vitamin A deficiency was among the lower segment of the population. And they are now consuming palm oil because of its price competitiveness. Their intake of oil has increased significantly. And that has contributed greatly 
in, in eliminating the vitamin A deficiency. And then about the campaigning, you know the Malaysian palm oil is campaigning this oil throughout the country since last couple of decades. And we are very strong in the social media. We have more than 3 million followers. This Malaysian Palm Oil Council, Dhaka office, having more than 3 million followers. And, 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 we, are and we are campaigning regularly with the, with the beneficial impacts of palm oil. We have done a number of promotional activity uh, in cooperation with the Bangladesh edible oil. And with this thing, their brand Mijan is now a popular brand, popular brand of palm oil in the country. Almost there, uh, in fact, they're the number one brand of palm oil in the country. And the growth is quite significant. So this is the way we are increasing. Now, although Malaysian Palm Oil Council is closing down their office, definitely Indonesia and Malaysia will sort out some way how to continue the campaign in this country. Thanks. Great, great. Uh, thank you, Mr. Fakur. I think that was really helpful. Maybe I think uh, I'll just take the next question to you, Faisal. Uh, and, uh, you know, the issue is why do we not have a lot of consumer oriented brands or, you know, brands selling palm oil with a little upmarket appeal. Why is it always that, you know, either generic palm oil is sold or, you know, it is sold in bulk or, you know, it doesn't really have some kind of uh, style or some other such kind of thing, you know, like soybean might have more consumer ads or other such kind of things associated with it. So what stops palm oil from doing it? And if we do it, how can we really address the image issue? Right, <clears throat> I believe uh, consistent effort from several marketers or several companies is needed. There are many a times some company came up, did some effort, developed some market, then the communication effort discontinued. I, I'm not talking about a single company. I'm, not, uh, I'm talking about the industry as a general. So if uh, three, four companies or three, four brands put a consistent effort across regions, across uh, consumer groups, then it will develop, otherwise it won't. Of course, there, there are benefits, there are good products, but uh, the image is not rising and uh, the consumer pack has much more potential than what it stands currently. So definitely con uh, a consistent effort from uh, several brands will help. And uh, in, in some public, uh, there are some uh, pub, uh, there are some news going on that regarding <clears throat> banning of loose oil uh, from Bangladesh, though it is not uh, fully uh, in practice yet. We are uh, getting news from uh, different media, so that will also help developing uh, a good brands based on palm oil. The future is good. It takes a little effort from uh, come uh, from some brands, and it will happen. I believe. Thank you. Thank you, Faisal. I think that was very helpful. Uh, maybe a follow-up question. Is there a local trade association of edible oil marketers that could take up this kind of, you know, projection of image or common branding or common promotion? I believe it will take time to develop something like that because um, uh, brands usually compete with each other. So, uh, usually I've seen uh, three, four brands uh, running communication by their own rather than uh, joining in a combined forum. So I, I, I believe uh, brands will run separately. Okay. But better they run at the same time. Okay, okay. great. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Pushpo, I'll just come back to you with a question. I think uh, one of the things I think that our audience really liked was the various empirical and evidence-based data that you shared. Now, I just wanted to share, is there any recent report that you have that, you know, because there are some media people also on this webinar that they can carry forward to or refer to in detail to learn further about uh, certain empirical or evidence-based research on palm oil and its benefits? 
So yes, um, thank you for that. Um, yeah, the answer is um, it's sporadic to tell you the truth. So there are many there are many um, uh, scientific papers and also reports um, looking into is it true is it fair to say like for example palm oil um, you know show these kind of effects and so on. But I think well, time and time again when um, when a lot of these scientists, they do these meta-analyses and looking into all the clinical data, um, they see that it's, it's, there's no problem with, with consuming palm oil, for example. So um, how do we go into that? Um, well, for scientists, for academicians, uh, we look into databases and so on. Now then, here's the thing. I think your, your, uh, your question was pointing into, uh, how about for the general public? How can we... Um, how can we uh, look into what kind of studies and so on. So I think that becomes part of the education and also the promotional programs in conveying all these health benefits, all these benefits uh, from palm oil into the general public. Um, is, is that is that where the question, is that about the question? I think that was it, but I just wanted to also understand if you have mm -hmm. some of your reports or any other reports that you can find, which might be on the internet or somewhere else that people could refer. Yes. So. Um, have if you can go into uh, NCBI PubMed, and then you click onto clinical trials or meta analyses, and then look into you can type in um, things such as a uh, palm oil and health or palm oil and uh, blood lipid profiles and so on. You can find many. You can find a lot of these papers and so on. You can also click in. Um, or search for palm oil and pediatric health. And then um, those kind of studies show up that uh, manufacturers need palm oil to produce um, uh, the, the, the complete uh, formula. So I won't name a particular source. So that's up to you, um, you because you can just prove yourself or you can just prove that, yes, you can find all these scientific papers um, on, on um you know, on showing the benefits of palm oil. Great, great. I think, thank you. That, that answers okay. the question. Uh, okay. so, so we'll move forward. I think we are reaching uh, quite close to our time. Uh, maybe I'll just go back to you, Park Dupito. Do you have any final words for us? You know, any final parting thoughts? Well, I, I think uh, all has been said, uh, yes. I agree with the suggestion of uh, Mr. Alam and also Mr. Mahmoud that uh, uh, the producing countries, especially in this case, Indonesia and Malaysia, needs to, you know, to design um, an, a, a good strategy you know, in addressing the, uh, the deficiencies of understanding and also on how to promote uh, palm oil uh, more in, in that market, uh, especially the point made by Mr. Alam that now POC is not uh, represented uh, uh, anymore in, in, in Bangladesh. And I think that is one of the, our expectation uh, out of this uh, collaboration and partnership with, with APCO. And APCO should be our, uh, you know, main partner in in promoting, uh, you know, palm oil in, in Bangladesh. That is my 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 last point, perhaps. But again, thank you to Dr. Puspa and all uh, speakers uh, today. Thank you. Thank you, thank, thank you Pak Diputu. And we do look forward to partnering with you on this important initiative, as I said, you know, we are very passionate about impact, sustainability, and, and this is definitely something that we would like to do. I, I would also like to mention, I think uh, some of our participants uh, joined us a little before the webinar, and if you did, you must have seen a few videos that we played on palm oil. Uh, you might like to take uh, advantage of a story writing competition that is going on, where you could contribute a story around palm oil, there are prizes worth up to $8,000 going on it. And I think the last date is September 15th. So do look up the CPOPSI website for it if you are interested in contributing a story around that. And also I think, uh, as we said, you know, we have our uh, next webinar come up on one of the producing uh, and the consuming markets soon. I did see one of the other questions that people are also asking about Japan. We had not thought of Japan so far, but I think uh, if there is interest in Japan on palm oil, we'll definitely you know, share more perspectives on other markets as well. Uh, you know, Just a final blurb, AFCO is present globally, and I think wherever you are, we would 
really like it and can support you. With that, I think I would like to thank uh, all our distinguished uh, panelists, uh, Tanjri, Park Gupito, uh, Mr. Fakrul, Dr. Pushpo, and Mr. Faisal. Th thanks a lot uh, for joining us here and being a part of this webinar and sharing your perspectives on the Bangladesh market. Uh, we would look forward to uploading the session on YouTube so that uh, people who missed it who, or who want to revisit the subject can do so. I also want to thank the Apco team for facilitating the webinar uh, and uh, to the CPOPC team who, who supported us in putting this all together. And we look forward to joining you on the next part of this webinar series. Thank you, everyone.